week's Art Starts Explorers. My name is Kay Slater, and I will be making along with you today for the next hour as we explore circles. I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts, and also joining us in the chat channel is Darcy Dyer, sorry, sorry, Darcy Dyer, who is our office coordinator, but also a member of Team Gallery. And so as you can see, the camera right now is uh, looking down at my workstation. And so I'm going to be making, and I can't see the comments. So that's where Darcy is going to be here. And if you have any questions, if you want to make some comments about what we're making, uh, if you want to share what you're making, especially if you have permission from an adult that is making with you, we would love to see what you're making at the same time. So uh, yeah, let's get started with Art Starts Explorers. I'm really happy to um, bring us to the third session of making around circles. If you, if this is your first week joining us, you can go back into our archived or our saved videos and see the first two weeks where we started exploring circles. We explored things like using circles for a warm-up, how to describe circles, using circles as texture, beginnings and endings or start and finishing and where they, uh, where they are in circles and if they're even important. Thinking about circles as a 3D object, so not just flat when we draw them, but when, we, when they have dimension. Um, finding and making faces just out of circles. Um, so we made some funny shapes and then all we did was add a circle that kind of made it look like an eye and we were able to make a face out of any shape that we drew. Um, and then drawing faces just using circles. So today, yep, we're gonna explore our third week of, uh, of circles. And I am excited to say that this is the season finale of our summer series of Art Starts Explorers Online. We've done 20 episodes this summer and it was, it was really exciting to try this out uh, alongside you. I was learning at the same time as uh, we were all making together. Um, so we'll have one more performance next week by uh, our artist in the, or sorry, our performing artist, Gina Lena. I'll have more information about that later. Uh, and then we'll start our season two of Explorers uh, at the start of October. So thank you so much for joining us um, for this final season or final episode of uh, the summer season one of Art Starts Explorers. So uh, like I always like to do for all of our public explorers, whether you're going to be in gallery with us or you're watching the video, we always like to look at the three rules of explorers so that we're in the right mindset. We're thinking in a similar way while we're making together. And so the first rule that we like to practice, and I always say practice, because we're not always perfect at it. We, you Maybe you're joining me every week, I'm doing this every week, and I'm still learning and practicing along with you. So we don't have to be perfect, but we want to practice respect. And we practice respect by checking in with ourselves, seeing how we feel today. It's okay if we're feeling grumpy. It's okay if we're feeling really happy. But we practice respect with each other by checking how everyone else is feeling. You might be feeling really good and ready to go and somebody else might be feeling nervous or they didn't sleep so great. And so being aware of how everybody in the room feels can help us practice respect. We practice respect by respecting our tools. So whether that's we're using our tools um, in the proper and safe way, maybe they get a little dirty while we're making them so we're gonna clean up as we go along. And if you're making with somebody else right now, you can ask them if they need to use a tool that you're using. If you only need to use it quickly, you can use your words or your signs and let them know that you'll be done soon. If you're gonna need it for a while, maybe you could lend them the tools so that they can use it for a bit um, and then they can give it back to you when they're finished. We also practice respect by acknowledging the land. And so the, the, um, the screen that you see right now is my studio and I am coming to you on the uh, stolen and ancestral territory of the Coast Salish people, in particular, the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish people. And uh, looking out the window today, we are enjoying some much needed rain um, after, after a kind of a smoky, smoky week. And so as a respectful guest, I want to appreciate that we are getting to enjoy some fresh air, um, especially in the Esquimalt area where where I um, where I am located, and you can practice respect by thinking about where you are located today. Whether you are over at a friend's house, or you're in a classroom, a community center, in a home, at someone else's house, you can take a moment to acknowledge and consider the land that you're making on today, 
and how we can be a respectful guest while we practice and make together. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. Everything that we're making today is just to try things out. Um, so I always encourage you to take things from the recycling bin and then take them apart when you're all finished because we're not making anything for keeps. This isn't something that you're gonna make and then stick up on the fridge. It's not even something you have to share. So when I say you can share in our comments, you don't have to. This is just a practice. So you don't have to be worried about something looking good because nothing is for keeps. We're just trying things out. And part of nothing is for keeps is not having expectations. If we're trying to make something that looks really good, it can be stressful. If the picture in our head before we start making doesn't match the thing that we made at the end, we can feel disappointed or frustrated or have a lot of pressure put on ourselves. So for today, all ideas are good ideas. And try surprising yourself. If you've done something before or you've seen somebody else do something before, try something new. Try something that you're really not sure how it's going to turn out because that's part of what we're trying to practice today. So I'm going to put these rules to the side because they're here for the workshop, but we want a bit more space to be making. I'm going to put my sandwich board and my little friend over because it is past 11 o'clock. We are ready to start. And as I said before, I'm learning alongside you um, as we're as we're exploring this format, this online format. And what I have learned in the last couple of weeks is that some people appreciate if I put out a sticky that says, here are some of the tools that I found around my studio that I'm going to be making with. You don't have to have these. You can just be watching along as we make. You could be watching somebody else as they make. But if you happen to have some paper, a mark making tool, and that can be anything from a pencil, uh, a marker, piece of charcoal, crayons, pencil crayons, some paint, anything that can make a mark on a page. And then a pair of scissors. And if you don't have a pair of scissors, that's okay. I love ripping paper. And this week, as long as we're using paper uh, for art making, I give you permission to rip up everything that we're making, whether, whether it's when you wanna cut something out, you can rip the paper, or at the end, where we rip up everything that we've done because we're just trying things and we're not making anything for keeps. Okay, so let's start exploring week three of circles. So just like the past two weeks, I wanna start with a warm up. And you can see I was drawing at the beginning on one page. I'm gonna use the other side of the paper because we're not trying to be precious. And that, what that means is that when we're taking things out of the recycling bin, we don't really have to worry about it being perfect or it being a perfect piece of paper because we're just trying things out and it's probably gonna go back into the recycling bin when we're finished. So if you have something with printing on the other page or you've tried something before, that's cool. That's, that's the perfect paper to use for uh, our warm up. Okay, so in previous weeks for our warm up, we did lots of circles and we described them. Then we explored making texture with circles. But this week's warm up, we're going to think about emotions. So what I want us to do is think of a couple of different emotions and whether you write it down or you draw a picture um, or you just divide up your space, however you wanna do it. I think I'm gonna divide my page like this. And you don't have to divide your page, you could fold it, you could just have a bunch of different scraps or you could just have the sections in your brain. And I'm gonna call this section over here, happy. And I'm gonna call this section over here, sad. And I'm gonna call this section over here, angry. And you can call any of the sections whatever emotion um, you want, whatever mood or emotion. I'm just picking those three, I'll pick three more. How about funny? How about afraid? And then how about mysterious? But you could pick anything. You could pick calm, you could pick hungry, you could pick excited. Any emotion you want to think of to, um, to now explore our warm up for our circles. So now that I've made all of these different sections, I wanna answer the question, can a circle have an emotion? So I'm going to think about one of these emotions while I start drawing a circle in this section. And whether that's you're thinking about it or you're trying to make the circle look like it's happy, give it a shot. 
let's try to fill out all the sections that we have. And if you can't think of something for each one, that's okay. Just keep drawing a circle for one of the emotions. And if you really can't, if you can't, uh, you can't come up with an emotion, um, you're welcome to copy all of mine and just pick one and draw some circles. Let's give it a shot. What does a happy circle look like to you? And it's not necessarily gonna look like mine. And it doesn't have to be right. You could go, I'm just gonna try this and maybe it doesn't actually look like a happy circle. Hmm. What does a happy circle look like to you? Maybe it's got a different color. Maybe it's how fast you draw the circle. Maybe it's, again, it's how you feel. So I'm gonna change my tone of voice while I'm drawing my sad circle. It's a sad circle. A big size, a sad circle. How's it going? Do you feel like you've been able to draw a circle with emotion? All right, an angry circle. Uh, I'm gonna pick green. All right, I feel like when I'm angry, I tend to go really fast. I tend to not really think about what I'm doing. Don't always go in one place. It's not always perfect. Maybe it's really big and it, oh yeah, it takes up the space and moves the paper around. Maybe it's big yeah there you go maybe it's so big it almost goes through the page there you go i feel like that was an angry circle for mine but your anger is probably going to look different than my version of anger or angry right so maybe you didn't use this color or maybe you didn't go fast maybe you get really quiet or slow when you get angry maybe you hide and you don't go out, and maybe your anger is really, really, really small. Everybody's anger is gonna look a little bit different. So that's why this is an interesting challenge, because even if we were all sitting together and we could all see each other's page, it probably wouldn't look the same. If you're making along with somebody else, uh, and especially if you're making along with an adult who's struggling with this, um, share yours, compare them. Ask what you notice that is different between the two pages. Did you use the same color? Did you use a different color? Does one circle look more angry than the other? Okay, let's keep going. I feel like for funny, I need, I need orange. Orange is my favorite color. I feel like funny is kind of a positive, happy, happy emotion. So I'm gonna pick my favorite color. What's a funny circle? I feel like a funny circle probably isn't very round. And that's my opinion. What's a funny circle look like to you? I think my funny circle is kind of maybe Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think the funny the funny sound is part of it as well. Maybe it's over on top of each other as well. So not really fast or not really slow. I'm kind of taking my time. Funny noises with my mouth. Kind of not really controlling the circle as I went along. I feel like that's pretty that's pretty funny for me. And don't forget, as I'm going along, you can keep drawing circles in your one section. You don't have to do all six of these. You could just do one. And if you feel like you didn't get the circle that you want and you wanna keep trying, grab another piece of paper and keep going. There's no reason why this whole page can't be sad now. Just sad circles. There are no rules for how you wanna explore this. If you wanna take a whole page and just try it out, then that's great. Yeah, I feel like my sad has to have like a little waver. Like, you know how sometimes when you're kind of sad, you sniff, you maybe whimper, or maybe how a tear falls down the face, how it's kind of long and slow. Yeah, that's how I feel like drawing a sad circle. Okay, so I've decided there's gonna be lots of space for sad for me for these circles, and that's okay. Okay, afraid. 
how am I going to draw an afraid circle? You know what? I think I want to do it in neon green. So something maybe gross and slimy that has scared me. Maybe, you know what? I feel like afraid circles are colored in for me. What does an afraid circle look like to you? Yeah, there you go. Maybe it's also kind of, you know what? Maybe it's kind of like a blob that's sitting on the ground. There you go. Oh, I like that. Afraid. Maybe it quivers a little bit, like shaking if you're, if you're nervous or afraid of something. I feel like it has to be, has to be horizontal. It has to be flat, left to right, rather than up and down. I feel like this is less of an afraid circle to me than this one. Oh, it's okay. I don't have to cross it out. If it feels better to cross it out, you can. If you're like, nope, I don't feel like this circle makes me feel afraid or looks very afraid, you can cross it out if you want. Or you could color on top of it. You could change up the marker you're using, right? We're just trying to learn how we can express an emotion by drawing a circle. Okay, well I have one more category left. I can use for mysterious. I feel like I'm going to use black because the idea of something hiding in the dark, right? Something that maybe we can't quite see. And so I think I'm going to make kind of a vague circle. And so like, I'm not really sure where the circle starts. Which is the circle that you want to pay attention to? I guess it's kind of got something to do with afraid because you're not really 100% sure. You don't really know which one. You can't with total guarantee say which is the, the right circle or the circle that you want. There you go. Yeah, that feels like a mysterious circle to me. I'm gonna do another one. I think I don't want it to be just a perfect swirl like this. I feel like this one actually has more control and I can actually tell where the circle started. I think for me, I want to draw over. Yeah, I feel like it's more mysterious when you can't really tell where things start or finish. There you go. So I was talking through while I was figuring out how to do this, and that can be helpful as well. If you need to, if you want to pause the video, or if you want to turn off the sound for a second, or look away, and then try it yourself. Say it out loud while you're drawing the circle. I feel like this is a circle, and it has to be sad because this reason. Or draw the picture, and then ask yourself, does this look sad? Ask the circle, does it say anything bad? Probably won't because we're drawing it down, but if you can imagine the circle has feelings, you can ask it why it feels sad. Why does it look sad? And maybe you'll notice something by doing that little storytelling with yourself. All right, so that was our warm up. What do you think? Do we answer that question? Is there, is there an answer to that question? Can a circle have an emotion? I feel like yes. I feel like I've successfully conveyed or shown or made some circles using emotion. I feel like that's a pretty angry circle to me. I feel like these are pretty sad circles. Even without any color, I feel like these are kind of sad circles. I feel like afraid was probably the hardest one for me. What was the hardest circle for you to draw? Okay, so if you wanna keep making while I keep going, that's all right. You don't have to, you don't have to do any of the next activities if you wanna just keep drawing these circles. What I'm gonna do now is if you have a pair of scissors, you can grab those. But I remember what I said about ripping paper, you can also rip the paper. What I want you to do is I want you to isolate or cut out or rip out a few of these circles. I'm gonna start by ripping because I said that we were allowed to rip. And you can see when I'm ripping, I'm going pretty slowly. Okay, pretty fast, but, but not like just ripping the page. I'm being kind of controlled. I'm using my thumb to rip specific spots. And what I want to do now is I want to pull out some of these circles that I drew. And I'm going to put them in a pile. And if it is easier or faster for you to use your scissors, I've got really big scissors here today. This might not actually be faster. And if you feel uncomfortable or you or these are like the big scissors are the only scissors that you have in the house um, or wherever you are making today, it might be a good idea to ask an adult 
Or if you're an adult and you feel uncomfortable using the big scissors, you could also ask somebody else um, that feels confident. And that's okay. You know, just because, just because somebody's an adult doesn't mean that they know exactly how to draw or cut or make something. That's why for explorers, it doesn't really matter how old you are. It doesn't really matter how much uh, art making you have done in the past. We're just trying things out all together. Age doesn't mean how old you are isn't really important when we're all just exploring, right? None of us can make a mistake if we're all just practicing um, to see what happens. And that's one of the things I really like when we're exploring is that, um, sure, I do a lot of art, but sometimes when I'm making something and I have to make it look really perfect or really good, it can be really stressful. And right here, I have the opportunity to try things out and see what happens. And then when I know how something is gonna work out, then I've got those skills when I wanna try and make it for keeps later on. I didn't have to practice using my special, um, my special or final project. Okay, so kind of a couple of those circles. Using scissors goes too slow for me, so I'm gonna keep ripping. So I think I want one of these mysterious circles. Yeah, I really like how this one turned out. It doesn't have to be perfect. See, I've kind of ripped, ripped along the line. It's kind of circular, but I didn't get it perfect, and that's okay. And you certainly don't have to have the word. I just circled sad when I did mine, but, uh, but you don't have to have um, the word. We're just making a pile of the circles that we made. What do you notice when you're starting to isolate or you're starting to cut out the circles? Do you notice something different when they're, um, when they're taken out of the context or taken off of the page and you see them by themselves? Do they look more like the emotion that you were trying to convey? Do they look more angry or mysterious or happy? Or do they just look more like just circles without the words beside it? What do you think? Okay, I'm gonna do two more circles. We'll have a nice pile of circles. And again, don't worry about it. If you're still slowly cutting these things out, that's okay too. You can also watch what I'm doing and then when, uh, when the video is all finished, you can keep cutting out your circles and then you can follow along with however your circles are. So don't worry, no rush. If you need to take a little bit longer, that's okay. We're all going at our own pace. Okay, one more. Oh, I said one more, but I kind of want that afraid circle. Okay, sorry, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> you got a bit more time to cut something out if you're still cutting. Almost. I just really like how how very chemical this color is, right? It kind of looks like uh, nuclear waste or um, or like snot, <laughs> right? Isn't that a funny color? I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna take all these scraps. I'm gonna put them aside because who knows? Maybe we're gonna use them later, or we'll just throw them in the recycling bin. And now what I'm gonna do is what what these are called are these are called something called a ready-made. A ready-made is when you can find something that is already made. Do I have a sticky here that I've already written that on? Nope, I don't have a ready-made, ready-made sticker. So I'm gonna write that down. Ready-made, right? And so a ready-made, as I said, is just something that has already been made. So for us, we made our ready-mades, right? So these are, these are now circles that we made ourselves. But if we were to give this to somebody else and say, here you go, here are some already made circles, they wouldn't have to make any circles. They've already got their circles. So that's why we call them ready-mades. If you're gonna go through your house or your uh, classroom or wherever you're making today, um, you could go and find things that were circles already. I didn't make this lid right this was a this is a jar lid that goes on top of a jar and these both end up being circles so if i was looking for circular ready-mades these are all ready for me to be able to create with and that's why we call them ready-mades but in this case we actually drew and we cut out and now we've got our own version of ready-mades that we made ourselves 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to take these circles and we're going to see if we can actually make an emotion just using circles. Can we convey an emotion? Can we show an emotion just playing with the circles that we made? I'm going to turn my voice off for a second. I'm going to see, I'm going to move my circles around and see if I can make something um, and make something that feels a little bit emotional using my circles. And you can do the same thing or you can just watch me. This is the first thing I made. I kind of picked, I picked the angry circle, and we know it was angry because you saw me draw it. But maybe somebody coming along doesn't know that this is the angry circle. Maybe they just see a green circle with a bunch of blobs on it. What I did was I put them all around. Even though this one says sad, I don't really feel like it, it is a sad circle in this context, right? We've taken these circles that we drew with emotion, but now we're using them in kind of a collage to make something. What do you see? I see maybe these could be planets, and there are planets rotating around them. I see maybe this is the top of somebody's head, and these are the tops of other people's heads, and they're all standing in a circle with somebody on the inside. What if this was a green sun, and these are clouds, or even sunbeams that are out from the circle? What do you think? Do you does that feel a certain way? I feel kind of happy when I see this circle formation or calm. I don't really feel very negative because all the circles are kind of lined up uniform or equidistant or the same amount of space between each one of them. And there's something really ordered, just like when you put all your toys away or you put your books up on your shelf or you tidy up the kitchen or you're playing with a friend and you put away all your art making uh, uh, tools at the end and everything feels really kind of clean and contained and it feels calm like you're ready to go again next time you want to make so i feel like this was kind of a calm or happy shape just using circles let's see what happens when we move it again And this is the great thing about doing collage without having to do it use glue. So if we were had a piece of paper and we were gluing all these down, we would kind of be stuck. We would only be able to use these ready-mades once because they'd be stuck on the page and then we wouldn't be able to use them again. But when we're just playing around with our ready-mades, we can move them around the counter and we can, or the, the uh, table or wherever you're making, if you're making them on the floor and you have lots of space, right? We're able to do whatever we want and we're not stuck by keeping them in one place. Okay, I decided I would do another kind of circle again, but this one I wanted to do kind of a swirl. And so as far as emotion is concerned, I guess I don't feel quite as happy when I look at this one, or even as calm, but I don't think I would feel angry. I kind of feel more mysterious in this case again, because it's like, why are these pieces more far away than these other ones. Are they running away? Is this the path that this piece took to get away from here? What story can you see? What emotions can you see when you're kind of telling a story of the shapes that you lay out? And that can be really fun too, right? Taking any of these ready-mades and then building your own story. And then you could tell um, a friend or an adult or whoever you're making with, you can tell them a story of why you put things where you put them. All right, so that was our warm up using circles. As I said, I feel like, can a circle have an emotion? Yes, but I feel like a circle also can show emotion, right? Can paint a picture of emotion, can draw a picture uh, of an emotion. And we also explored the idea of ready-mades. We drew something for one purpose, and then we took it and we made use of it in a completely different way. These were originally drawings for emotions, and now they're tools that we can use to create something new. Okay, 
I'm going to put these to the side. And if you're still making, if you're still exploring the motion with circles, that's all good. You don't have to move along. You can keep listening or watching uh, whatever I'm making next, or you can just keep making with circles. That's okay. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my scraps again because I think I want to pick some of these emotions. I want to focus on taking those words. And if you've already ripped up the page, that's okay. You can take a whole nother piece of paper and you can do this again. You could just write. And I know that sad was one of my pieces there. So I'm going to go sad on this piece of paper and then I'm going to rip sad. And so you can do that as well. But let's have a couple of pieces of paper that have those different emotions that we were exploring before. This one mysterious. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just practicing. Um, See, I've just ripped it out really fast. It doesn't have to be uh, really uniform or uh, look brand new. We're just trying to get the words there. Okay, I think it's a lot of, oh, there's funny, but I think I'd like, I think I want happy. Oh, I ripped through happy. So I'm just gonna write happy again over here. Happy, there we go. Okay, so we're still exploring circles. And yes, we, we determined that an emotion can have, or sorry, a, a circle can have an emotion or express an emotion. I'm gonna grab a new piece of paper. And now what I wanna do is I wanna try and draw some faces using these different emotions. And you don't have to draw a perfect face. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. I'm gonna draw a bunch of different faces here and you can exactly copy what I'm doing or you can draw your own. And don't worry, if, if you feel like you're not so great at drawing faces, that's okay. Remember, we're just practicing. Doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if you draw a really bad face, that's kind of funny, right? So don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there are no rules. Just draw an angry face, whatever you think would look angry. change your mind as you go along. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> There's my funny face. Uh, where's my happy face? For my happy face. It's kind of a scary happy face. <laughs> right? It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. Yeah, that's, you know what? So yeah, that, that's that's a weird happy face. <laughs> I'm gonna give it some hair. There we go. Maybe some dimples over here. Kind of feels like it's forced to be happy. <laughs> okay, what's a what's a sad face? Sad face. Okay, this one I think. This one I'm gonna just make it cry. It's sad because it doesn't have very much hair. Yeah, I'm gonna give it some hair on the side there. There you go. And then one more for me. And maybe you did a whole bunch more emotions. Maybe you just did one. And you can draw a face multiple times, right? If you just did happy, you could draw a couple of different happy faces. We're just going fast to see uh, if we can draw a face that's connected with these. Okay, one more. Uh, mysterious. Ooh, what am I gonna do for mysterious? I know. Feel like a mask is what I need for mysterious here. I'm gonna color it in black. Right, dark mask. And these are really small, small mouths because we don't actually know what they're feeling. And then maybe they're also wearing a hat. So we don't even know what kind of hair they're they have on under their hat. There you go. There's my mysterious face. Okay. So if you're still drawing your faces, that's okay. Don't don't worry about it at all. And so what I wanted us to do was I wanted us to look at um, 
drawing these faces, and we weren't going fast. It wasn't we weren't doing um, you know a, a fancy portrait. But even so, for sad, I used kind of a square shape for the face. But in general, these are pretty circular faces, right? We've got these round faces. Do these look like anybody you know? Maybe not exactly like anybody you know, but could these be anybody? Could this be your best friend? Could this be your teacher? Have you ever seen your uh, a friend make this face where their, where their eyes get squinty, their mouths are open really big because they're laughing, their cheeks get kind of red? Or maybe your sibling or an extended family member they get really upset with you and you notice that their eyebrows go down on an angle like this. And maybe their, their mouths get real close and maybe they get kind of tight. Um, and for sad, right, you'll notice that generally when people are sad, they have that, that downward face, um, that downward shape for their mouth, right? And so we kind of all know what these emotions are, even without the words. If I was to take these words away, all those funny or the happy <laughs> it's still i mean it makes me happy it makes me happy to see that funny face <laughs> and i feel like this this is like laughing so maybe this is less funny this is more the 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 funny face because they're making this this grimace and then maybe this is the happy face they're so happy that they're they're crying with laughter right where i'm getting at is that generally for all of these they have something in common with all faces right so even though you might know somebody who maybe their face isn't this wide or maybe they have a different color of skin or maybe their eyebrows are really big or maybe they only have one eye, whatever they have in common or sorry, whatever they don't have in common, in general, you could draw a picture that's really simple like this using just a circle, right? and then another circle for eyes, and then a half circle for a mouth, and that could be anybody, right? And that's the cool thing about circles and something called icons, where this face can represent anybody. It, it could be you, it could be a parent, it could be a guardian, it could be your teacher, it could be a friend that you haven't talked to for a long time, right? Because most people have two eyes, a face or a head, and a mouth, right? And that's, that's really kind of cool when you think about circles, that circles can represent anyone, right? You can just draw them with circles and you can tell somebody that's you and they probably won't fight with you because they also have two eyes and a mouth and a head, right? So this is called the universi universality of a simplified face. It's where we find objects, where we find items. So for example, the eyes, the mouth, and the head that everybody has in common, and we're able to simplify it. We're able to make it basic. We're able to just have a few things that represent or look like or are pictures of someone else. And then you don't have, to, so at the beginning, when we're just trying to go fast or we're just trying to represent everybody, this is really easy because we tend to see faces or um, the whole idea of eyes and a mouth in a lot of different objects. So when we're all done our workshop today, I encourage you to go and see if you can find faces around your house, just thinking about the fact that there are eyes and a mouth and a head. The easiest way that I like to say is that if you, uh, whether you're in a house or you're in a public space, have you ever seen one of these? You probably have. This is an electrical light, right? And sometimes there's a little screw right here, or an electrical panel. There's a little screw right there. And so you can take your plug right, with the, the two plugs right here, or maybe it's got three because it's got a grounding line. And you can plug it in to the electrical socket. But if you look, have you ever noticed that it 
kind of looks like there are faces on the electrical banner. And this is what I'm talking about. When, we've, when we see faces all the time and we recognize that our face is basically just made up of two dots or two circles or two lines, and really it is kind of a circle if you think about the electrical socket, right? It's like this. So there's just two long circles and then one circle down there, right? And then there's the electrical socket around the outside. It kind of looks like a face, right? And when we wake up in the morning, if you look at yourself in the mirror while you're brushing your teeth, or if you're going for a walk and you see your face in a reflection, it's we are always looking at our face. And because we're always looking at our face, it's really easy for us to find faces in other places, especially faces that have things in common with our own faces. So the next time somebody tells you, oh, I can't draw a face, just tell them, yes, you can. Can you draw a circle? And ask them to draw a circle. And if they say they can't draw a circle, you should tell them to come on and check out these videos, these three weeks on circles, and we'll, we'll help them learn that, yeah, they can draw a circle, no problem. So all they need to do is draw that circle, and then you can go, okay, well, you drew your circle, so I know you can draw a face because you just have to draw one more circle, one more circle, and one more circle, and you've got yourself a face. And that's why emojis, right? Those, the, the funny little uh, emoji pictures that you see um, that we use to express ourselves are so universal, are so used by everybody. Because even though your face might not be yellow, and maybe you have uh, eyebrows, and maybe you have, uh, oh, you probably have a nose, right? You still know that that face can represent you being sad, right? And that's the cool thing about the universality of the simplified face, right? This could be anybody. Okay, so we've explored circles having emotions. We've explored a simplified face and why emojis can represent anybody and why nobody is ever allowed to say, I can't draw a face because you know that's not true. If they can draw a circle, they can draw a face. And if you wanna keep practicing this, if you wanna keep making circles and keep drawing faces, and see if you can make a, uh, make a circle with um, the, t the three circles and make it not look like a face, right? Can you prove me wrong? Can you make it so that nobody, or so that you can't draw a face with those four circles? One, two, three, four. Try it out, prove me wrong. See if you can make a face uh, or not make a face using those four dots. Is it pretty hard? Is it pretty easy? Or do you still see a face? Try it out. Okay, so we've checked out the universality of a simple face or an icon of a face. Let's put this to the side as well. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our ready-mades. And this one, especially because I had some stuff all ready to go. And if you don't have something um, right at your desk right now, that's okay, or wherever you're working, um, you can go looking for this later. But what I'm going to do is looking just around at my, my workstation right now, I'm gonna look for things that have a circle. So we've got the tape. I already showed you this lid. And I was cheating a little bit. I knew I was gonna talk about this today, so I brought my lid over. But I always have um, a roll for a paper towel because I really do love um, art making with cardboard and paper towels you can know that I've, I've used them before. But what's cool about that is, yep, it's a rectangle when you look at it like this. I'm gonna move the paper so you can see it. Sure, it's a rectangle when you look at it like this, but boom, we've got two circles now, right? When we look at it from the top. What else? I pulled some string over. Did you pull anything else over this morning? Oh yeah, I found a hairband. <laughs> so if you've got a hair tie, right? That kind of looks like a circle as well. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these circles, these ready-mades, the things that we already found that had circles, and we don't actually have to draw a circle now. We've already got these objects and we can find them readily around the house and we can use these to be the start or the basis of our picture. And so I'm gonna bring my paper back in. I'm gonna do two because I'm using markers so it can be really clear on the video screen but it sometimes bleeds through that paper, so I'm gonna use two pages. And I'm gonna take my first ready-made, my first circle that I found, 
Now, what, whatever you found, if you found something that was a circle, that's all good. Uh, you could use hair um, earbuds, so like a set of headsets that have the long string, and you can use those to uh, shape a circle. You can find a bottle, right, a spray bottle. I'm sure you can find something that is a circle. And if you can't, that's okay. You can just follow along while I'm, I'm working with circles. So without grabbing any markers or making any tools to begin with, what can we make just using circles? I'm gonna take some of these other circles. Oh, and because we already made these, I don't have to draw anything. But we already drew circles, so these are these are ready-mades. Remember we called them ready-mades before? Ha ha! It's because they're on my artboard. There you go. I made a bullseye using nothing but ready-mades. What else can we make? I'm gonna move this down a little bit. That's gonna become a nose. I'm still gonna use my drawings. Ha ha ha! <laughs> there and then oh now I'm gonna I'm gonna use something else I'm gonna use the string right because the string the string can be a circle right there you go there's my circle so I'm gonna use one string here to make one circle and one string over here to make another circle, so same string. Ha ha! There you go. And I got a bear, right? Yeah, I'm gonna make the whole body as if this was a you know, there's a big, big circle right there. <laughs> there you go, right? Do you see the bear, the nose, and there's the muzzle. They've got their confused eyes or their mysterious eyes, and then their ears. What if I made a circle within a circle? I'm gonna make a circle within a circle. There you go. Oh, and I wanted that body again, so I'm gonna bring that over. And then I'm gonna take this little piece and try and make another circle over here. There you go, circle within a circle. There you go. Right? So we don't even need drawing tools. I mean, I cheated a little bit because I had already done my drawing tools, but maybe I'll find something else. Maybe it's a coin, right? Maybe it's some money pieces that you find. Maybe it's a bunch of hair elastics. Could you draw a picture using nothing but hair elastics? You, you don't know until you try, right? What if you change things out? Okay, I'm gonna take the tape out. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave this part in. And then you change up the circles. How does it change? How does it look different when you use different circles? Oh, I know. Here, this one's gonna this one's gonna add a bunch of dimension to it. So I'm gonna still leave my bare outline. And what do you notice when you change, when you use the different shapes or use the different objects? Does something still have the same emotion or look that you wanted it to have when you use these different things? Okay, I'm gonna use this mug. And now this mug is like the nose. So I'm still gonna bring those ear or the eyes down here. Well, now the eyes aren't really big. <laughs> but then, oh, I'm gonna get my sad circle here. And then the nose, there you go, right? So it's still there, <laughs> right? But I used a different circle, I used a different ready-made. How does that look different? It kind of looks like the sculpture now is coming closer to you, right? It kind of looks like there's a dimension or 3D of the picture that you were gonna make. All of a sudden, this, this, um, this drawing that you were gonna make, the drawing using the multimedia, using the different tools, using the ready-mades, becomes kind of like a sculpture, right? Somebody can't quite see it if they're looking at the side. They have to look at it from the top to be able to see the sculpture. If they looked at it this way, they'd be able to see that the nose kind of comes out, but maybe they'd move, they'd lose some of the uh, details of seeing it straight on. That's something else you can do with your art making. Walk around what you're making. Have somebody else make theirs, and then switch places 
and then look at what they made and see what you notice when you're looking or walking around something that somebody else made. You might notice something when you're looking at it at one angle that you don't notice when you're looking at another. Okay, so let's make one more drawing using circles or, or sculpture, however you want to call it. I always like to call these drawings because I'm using paper as my base. But if you're not using paper, if you're just doing it on a table or in your play area or on the carpet, then maybe it looks like a sculpture. If you had a table or a bench or a plinth, and a plinth is just a rectangle that you can put something on top of. So um, wherever you're making, if you see uh, a rectangular um, table where somebody maybe has put a vase or a piece of artwork on it. Usually that's what a plinth is. It's kind of a funny word here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. So plinth, P-L-I-N-T-H. They usually just look like a big old rectangle. If you've ever been to an art gallery or a museum, you may have seen a plinth before, but some people have them in uh, classrooms or, or even their homes because they'll put like a, a vase on the top of it, right? Or a piece of art, there you go. So that's a plinth. That's that funny word I just said, a plinth. So, um, but I mean, you could make your own plinth. What happens if you would stack some CDs or some books or a bunch of rectangular things that you find, right? You put them all together and then the, uh, the sculpture that you make, you place on top of it. How does it look different when you walk around something that sits on top of a plinth versus when you're using it flat on an art surface, right? Does it look different? What do you notice? Try it out. Okay, let's try another picture. I really like the string, right? String is pretty fun because you, you really can draw with it, right? And you don't, you don't have to worry about making a, making a mistake or pulling out your eraser or it, or it even being perfect because uh, you can just pick it up and start again. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to make some breakfast. <laughs> there, there's, do you see what this is? Okay, and then there's my second one. Now, there we go. So there's two circles. And then I'm gonna bring this around here. Right, still trying to make circles, even though I'm using this, this string. It's my ready-made, okay. There we go. Oh, oh, got caught. That's okay. What happens if you make it slow? What happens if you make it fast, right? If you're drawing with string or you're using ready-mades, can you go slow? Can you go fast? What happens? And don't, be, and don't be upset if it doesn't turn out exactly the way that you wanted, right? Because we're trying to practice no expectations. If you get frustrated, that's okay. You're allowed to be frustrated, but try to, try to call it that you were frustrated and then make something new or try it again until it works out the way you want it to. Check it out. You see what I was trying to do here? <laughs> Maybe it looks a little bit different to you. What do you notice? What I was trying to do, here, I'm gonna bring some color in now. So now, Right? We tried things with it, with that were 3D. We did our drawings with our string or with our ready-mades and then we could put them away. But if you happen to be using a piece of paper, there's no reason why you can't now bring in some color to what you used your uh, string or your earbuds or a cord or whatever you used to draw with. Okay, there's one. And then what? Need this to be a little bit bigger. I've got a bunch of scrap uh, dot matrix printer. So this is this is a this is paper that is used for a printer that I no longer have, but I have lots of spare paper, so I can keep using that. And I'm gonna bring this over here so I can keep drawing. There we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my use my pen again, right? Like 
this. Oh, grab it. That's okay. Right? Always readjust it. Maybe you'll notice something new as well, right? If you if the paper moves or your string moves, then you have the opportunity to try something new that you didn't do last time. I'm just going to kind of color this in so that it looks different from those sections right there. It's nice and fast, right? Because because we're not keeping it, we're not doing any of this for keeps. Just real fast. <laughs> ah, right? That's fine. Right? And it's fun to laugh at ourselves as well, right? While we're making, if it doesn't turn out exactly the way we want, right? We don't have to be frustrated. We could just laugh and go, oh, what happens? Or what can I do differently? If it's doing that every time and I don't like that, what should I do differently? Okay, well, every time I keep drawing on this page, it wants to move. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape. And I'm just going to, you know, you know, tape that down. And let's see, does that make it better? Yep, it does. Perfect. Solved. That's the cool thing about art making as well is that you basically become a problem solver. Right? Whenever you come across a challenge where something's not working exactly the way you want it to, you have the opportunity to think about how you could make it better or make it different. And there aren't any rules right now, so there's no one to tell you that you're doing it right or wrong. You're just trying it out. And sometimes it won't work. But sometimes you might learn something really cool that then you can share with your friends. All right, what do you notice? I was trying to make a frying pan with two eggs, right? All right, here, what happens now? Here, I'm gonna trace the string. Oh, it's getting caught on my marker. That's okay. Trace the string. Oh, there it goes. I don't know if that was there. Trace the string. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's pull the string away. Check it out. Yeah, right? That kind of looks, <laughs> kind of looks like a frying pan, right? I'm gonna draw it again because I, I got to practice using my string. Here we go. Right, so you can use your string as a um, as something to prototype or try it before you use your markers, just for fun. If you have a piece of string and you're bored and you just wanna make something for a little bit, see what you can make. See if you can make it fast, see if you can make it slow, right? Just see what happens if. And that's always what we're trying to do when we're exploring. We want to ask ourselves, what happens if I, and then see what happens. And if the answer is, what happens if I do this thing and it turns out really bad, well then we learned. We learned that when we close our eyes and use our marker, it probably is going to turn out badly. Uh, we learned that if we are going to use a string and then we're going to try and color, that the marker might get caught on the string sometimes. So maybe pencil crayon is better. Or try it again with crayon next time. We won't know until we try. So that is bringing us to 12 o'clock. Thank you so much for everybody who joined me this week. Anyone who joined me for the last uh, uh, three weeks of, of circles. But then before that, for the last 20 episodes, if you've been a part of Explorers to this point, uh, I really appreciate your support. I really am excited to see all the things that you have made. Uh, if you want to throw them up in the comment section, Darcy, it will still be here and then I will be checking the comments later. I will also take this video later today and I will repost it so that it has captions so that anybody who needs to be able to read um, as I am talking, and I did a lot of talking today, so I think those words are going to be really important. That will be posted up. Feel free to like the video, share the video, and join us next week. We're going to be back in the Art Starts Explorers, or sorry, the Art Starts Gallery um, in downtown Vancouver, and we're going to be hosting the artist Gina Lena. Gina Lena is a two-time Juno-nominated singer, songwriter, and the author of a new book, The Mighty River. And so she's going to be there and she'll have her book and she'll be talking about what it's like to be a writer. She's gonna teach you a little bit about a ukulele. She's gonna have her small, it's like a small guitar, her ukulele. So she's gonna teach a little bit about ukulele and she's gonna sing and you'll be able to sing along with her. So join us next week at 11 a.m. We'll have our free performance with Gina Lena. And then two weeks later, so the first Saturday of October, I will be, I will be back with season two of Art Starts Explores and we will start a whole new uh, set of making together. 
I'm gonna leave the, the video running just a little bit longer like I always do so that you can watch me clean up and make space for you to clean up because we always want to finish up our art starts um, explorers workshops by cleaning up and respecting the space and I'm gonna take all these things together and then I'm gonna throw them in the recycling bin because nothing that we made this week was for keeps. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks.